Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal tutorial. So in this video we're going to move on and move away for a little while from the player class and we're going to start implementing the game mode. So if we go back to our C++ classes there's a few things we need to do here before we can really do much more with the pawn that we've been focusing on. So if we double click to open the CR game mode and as soon as we have this open and ready I'm just going to start implementing the variables and the functions again for this class and we can start implementing these pretty much immediately this time. So the first thing I want is to create our public section as we've seen in the past there and we'll notice this time that in the header and the C++ file we don't actually have any constructor or anything at all really. So the first thing we want is the constructor for the runner class and remember we create a constructor by simply redeclaring the name of the class that we have up here and then we'll need to implement that a little bit later. Now the next functions we're going to make are the ones again we've got in the blueprints so we want our void endgame. We'll have our level complete which will also be of type void because it's not returning anything and I just noticed they're a bit too far out so I've just tabbed those back in so we'll get our level complete and then we want the final function for this class at the moment which would be the load and next level and again this isn't returning anything so we will just give that the uh, type void again. So these are going to be the functions that we can use just within the class. These won't need to be exposed to blueprints. We won't need to access these again. So the next thing we want is the variables. I'm going to put this into our protected section. What we're going to put in here is the widgets. And some of these don't actually need to be exposed in this way. But I want to give a visual representation when we compile this and go back into the engine. So just to see what's happening, I'd recommend going along with this. And you can clean things up and come back a bit later if you wanted. But the first thing we want to do is to declare our U property. And the values we'll need in this, and this is the one we're going to be using for all of them, is just to be edit anywhere. So we can edit this anywhere. Uh, blueprint read only. And I'm just going to give these the category of UMG. Now the first type that we want to create is using the T subclass of. And the type of class that we're going to put in this, this is essentially just a container for different class types. And we want to use the U user widget class. So when we expose this in the engine, this basically just means that we can only fill this property with classes which are a type of user widget and I'm just going to name this one the default level complete widget and again this is going to make a bit more sense as we go through and you'll understand why we're giving this name of default and again we're going to use the same u property and we'll paste this just below and then this time we want to get a class of the actual user widget again we'll make a pointer to this as we've done previously and we're going to call this one just level complete widget so this is going to be the actual user widget that we are using and I'll just remove the word class at the end of that. Don't know why I put that there. And quite simply, we're going to do the same thing again because we have our game complete widget, which is exactly the same. So I'm just going to make a space, put those below, and I'll just change the name of these because the setup's going to be exactly the same. But we're going to have the default game complete widget, and then we're just going to rename the other one game complete widget, like so. So that's going to be our protected section. Now, finally, we're going to go back and create our private section. And again, quite simply, we're going to need to give this class its own begin play, so void begin play. And remember, this is a standard function, so we need to override the functionality of this because we're using something of the same function name as already exists. And again, what we're going to be doing here is really just reinstantiating the variables that we had inside of the blueprint. So we want a U property, we're going to make this uh, edit defaults only, blueprint read only. And we want to allow private access because we, we're going to put this in the private section and we want this to be exposed in the blueprint. And we're going to call this levels. So you probably know what we're going to do now. We're going to need an array. So in C++ we need a T array. And the type of array that we're going to use is the string class, so F string. And then this is going to be our array of the level names, same as we've done previously. Remember that we also had a reference to the player controller because we're going to need to toggle the input modes and uh, which player controller is being controlled. So we want the class type of a player controller. Make this a pointer and we'll just call this one controller. We're going to need an integer to track the current index of the level we're on. So we'll call this, uh, we need this to be an int32 and we'll just call this current level index. And then when we have that, we'll need the reference to the next level that we're going to load. So this will be of type string again, so f string and then next level. And finally, we're going to have a function and we're just going to call this void check level. So the class up again, because we're not returning anything, can be of type void. And this is just going to be the same functionality we did at the beginning where we're going to call this at the start and it run through the possible levels and see what we're on and see which level is next to load. Now there is another function that we're going to come back a little bit later and add. And just a heads up that I'm going to go through with some kind of broken functionality that 
I kind of stumbled upon and fixed whilst prototyping the C++ version of this tutorial series, just because I think it's going to be really useful to highlight the issues that I found in loading levels in C++ compared to blueprints. And also I want to run through the logic and the steps that I took to debug and break that down and fix it. Uh, it's not going to be a huge problem and it's going to be really simple to fix anyway. But I just want to go through in the kind of process that I took when I was testing everything just so you can see the process there. So for now, this is going to be everything. We will be coming back and we will be updating this though. Okay, so that's everything in our header. So we can now move over to the C++ file and we can start making sure that we've implemented all of the functions that we've declared. So the first thing we have is our constructor, just in case we need to initialize any of the variables. So to define this, we'll just add the reference to the CR game mode just like so and that is our constructor we then want the begin play which remember is again of type void then the first thing we're going to do when we start adding the code into this and all of the functionality is we're going to be calling the check level so we'll add that now and then we just had our last three and again these are all going to be very similar so we've got the end game the level complete and the load next level okay so at this stage i imagine you're quite familiar with implementing the functions and everything now so i'm not going to spend too much time detailing these uh, just to finish this tutorial off though, I'm going to make sure that this compiles and I wanted to run through a little bit more about debugging uh, based on some comments I've had and the concepts that people are struggling with at the moment. The only other thing actually is I may as well add the includes that we're going to be using now. So at the top we'll add the include for the widgets which is in the blueprint section and simply under user widget. So user widget.h and then the we also need something called the kismet, the gameplay statics, and this is going to be for the level loading and stuff. Uh, but knowing this ahead of time, we'll just again add the include for this. This one is under the kismet library, and quite simply we're looking for the gameplay statics header. Uh, we actually don't need anything in the header file. This will have all of the references and knowledge that it needs. So if we just make sure that we've saved these, we'll go back over to the engine and we'll compile to make sure that all of this is working and I just need to add the double quotes there, otherwise that didn't end it. So back in Unreal, just gonna quickly compile this, make sure that this works and that we have everything ready to actually start implementing the functionality and the code in the next video. Uh, but as I said, what I'm gonna be doing is making a small error in the C++ file because I think in the past, all of the errors that I've shown during the video that I made, I think they may have all been in the header somehow. So I was quite easily able to find out where they were and link directly back to them. And what I find is um, people weren't sure how to do the same thing for the C++ files. And in fact, that's worked quite well because this is what's happening now is I'm not getting any link or a direct uh, underlined bit of text to tell me where it happened. And if you get that, then that's great because it will, you can click on that and it'll take you to that part of the file. And now the question has been asked though, if you don't have that, how do you know where to look and how do you debug through that type of thing? So really the only thing you can do with this stage is we're looking at errors here, for instance, which don't have this link. So what we're looking at is it's going to give you the, the class. So we already know that I've only changed the, the game mode. So we know that the error is going to be in the game mode class. That's going to be the first step. Uh, we can see that this one is in the header and it's missing a type specifier for the int. So we'd know kind of roughly what the problem might be there because we have the int 32 declared at the bottom of the, the, the class. Now, the other thing is we have this number here just after the file that it's in. That's the line number that the issue has happened or that the errors occurred. And we've got one in the C++ file as well. So we can start looking through these and see what's happening. Now, the logical way to do this is, like I've mentioned, if something is broken a few lines up, then because it's a top-down compiled language, that can cause problems and it may highlight errors that actually don't exist below. So if I was doing this, I'd start here at line 13 because that is the error which is highest at the, at the, in the script. So if I can fix that one first, that might mean that these aren't actually a problem and it just might be the case that it can't read that part of the code because of the error just above that. In fact, saying that we've got line eight as well, but that's in the C++ file. So we'll go to line 13 in the header and we'll see what's happening here. Um, C declaration of ACR game mode. So this is the main problem that I think people get, especially when you're starting out with this. That is completely useless, but we're going to go back and we'll see what's happening. Okay, so I can actually see what the problem is immediately. Uh, the underline now is ignoring it just because I thought it was that th the, the standard thing I mentioned in the previous video where it just was highlighting an error that wasn't actually there, but that is an error. And you can see that I've just missed the A at the beginning of game mode. So if we go back to the engine, um, just very quickly to look at this, as I said, that's kind of useless. It's almost jargon. It's not really saying what the problem is. It's just saying C declaration of ACR game mode. Now that would indicate that I've got this right. And the, the important thing, as I said, is we've been missing the A there. So 
it kind of gives us a general direction to look uh, looking for things like misspellings or if it hasn't been declared somewhere. So back in the header, I should just be able to do this. And in fact, doing that alone might make these error lines go away. And if we compile this, this may actually resolve all of the other problems that we have as well. Because we, remember, we did have one in the C++ file, and that was on line 8, which would be here. And it probably just meant that uh, we've tried declaring a constructor. There we go, so that's gone away. For a class name that didn't exist, because I just misspelled it. So we'll try this again. I'll save this. I'll go back and recompile. Okay, so I'm still getting the compilation failed. I just um, cleared the log by accident. So I've just recompiled again so that I could see the get the log back. So what I should have mentioned as well is that sometimes looking in the output log can give you a bit more information if you're not getting the, 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 the lines and everything that you'd hope for in the message log. So both of these are a little bit vague this time around. But we can see here, one of the main things it's mentioning is that the U user widget no register. So again, kind of complete jargon and rubbish, but we it gives us a place to look on what kind of things might be going wrong. So we're gonna go back to the header file to begin with and see what, what it's, uh, if we've done something wrong with the U user widget declarations. And in fact, I'm at a bit of a loss here because I know that looking at what I have here, this should compile. I can't see any issue of these. So this is the other thing I've mentioned in the comments is that if you are having these issues and you just need to get something to compile, uh, when you have roughly, like I've just tracked down, roughly what could be an issue is that it's mentioning the U user widget references, then we can just select this and Control C and uh, hit Control K and Control C. This will comment out the entire chunk. We'll save this. And because we're not actually using this at the moment, what we can afford to do is go back and again, we can try recompiling this just so that we can start pinpointing which parts of our code are stopping the compilation from working. So again, we'll try compiling and we'll see if this fixes it. If it does, then that means that everything else is fine. And I just need to track down maybe why the reference isn't coming through for the user widgets. Even though in my demonstration, my template project that I'm going from, I haven't needed to forward declare any of these. So that compilation worked. So that is where our problem lies. So now we've pinpointed quite easily what was stopping the project from compiling. And I do know what it is. And although we don't need direct access to it in the runner game mode class, we do need the project to know about the user widget. So if we go back here again, um, I completely forgot one of the steps that we need to do. And that is because it's not in one of the files that we've created. It's in the standard project files. So I think it's in the CS file. The So you have a CS file, a .cs file of the name of the project. So the cube runner build .cs. Now, if we look in here, this is the, the file that we want. We have the public dependency modules, which is the, the string that we're interested in. And it's including things at the moment. We will see that we've got the, the core inclusions quite a lot in all of the classes we're working with, as well as the engine and some other things. Now, anytime that you're using user widgets inside of C++ with Unreal, we also need to declare that here as well. So we're going to put a comma after the final one, which is the input core, and quite simply just declare in uppercase UMG. And that is all we need. So now the project is going to be ready to handle the user interface or UMG widgets. So I think that's the only thing that we're missing. If we go back to our game mode, we should now be able to go back to our header. And if we select all of this and hit Control K and U, so Control K quickly and then U quickly afterwards. Same for commenting is Control K and then Control C quickly after to comment these out. If we uncomment those, we can save this and we'll try again with the compilation. There we go. So that has compiled successfully. That is all it was. So that's what I wanted to do at the end of this video anyway, is to kind of debug through code and see what's happening. I didn't expect it to be quite that in depth. Uh, I was just going to do a mistype somewhere and show a process of fixing that in the C++ file, but me forgetting to do that in the project turned out to be quite helpful. Uh, that's one of those things that's quite easy to overlook because you may not do it too often, especially if you're just prototyping projects a lot. Uh, as I said, I tend to throw the UMG into blueprint references more often than not, just because it's faster. But I did want to show how to use them with C++ as well. So for that reason, I've included it. And it's just one of those things which I think is probably quite easy to overlook, as I did here. But that is the general way that you debug through code, find where your issues are. You kind of remove one thing at a time until things start working again. Now, had I completely forgot as well that I needed to include that in the .cs file, I think the next stage would have been, obviously, I had pinpointed that the issue was to do with the U user widget references because everything else that we've added has compiled perfectly fine. So we've pinpointed what the error is, what class it refers to. Um, I think past that stage, 
I probably would have jumped to Google and started looking at how to implement new user widgets into C++ uh, if I was doing this for the first time after being able to pinpoint it to such a specific topic as the it was only failing to compile if we included the U user widget reference. Uh, but as I said, I kind of remembered from past experience that the CS file does need that reference, the UMG reference. So I just went with that. But as I said, I just wanted to spend a little bit of time before going through the rest of this series, uh, just to show processes to debug your own code if you come up against any obstacles. So hopefully that's useful. What I have got planned as well in the future, I don't want to spend too long on one video just going through debugging and uh, errors like that, but I'm going to try and interlace them naturally into different videos, but that's going to be actually debugging the code with a compiler. So it's going to be attaching a process via Visual Studios or Visual Studio Code and being able to step through each line to see what's happening on each line of the code. But as I said, I will be leaving that for another video. So I'm going to leave this video here. That is the game mode class ready to use. So in the next video, we're going to be able to come back in and quickly start implementing all of the functionalities ready for the player class to interact with. So I'm going to leave this video here for today though. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or found it useful, then please do leave a like and share the video around. That's always appreciated. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to be kept up to date with the latest content coming from the channel. Also, on that note, uh, really, really grateful. We just hit recently, I think, 500 subscribers. So really good to see the channel growing quite quickly at the moment. And yeah, appreciate all of you for doing that. Really, really cool. So if you haven't already and you enjoy this content, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. As ever, though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.